is considering a lawsuit against the Missouri Secretary of State for discrimination because her office forced him to produce a birth certificate, but didn't make Obama show proof of citizenship to appear on the ballot. You know, he was senator in Illinois, right? So uh, Hector Maldato, 38, is seeking a Republican nomination for the U.S. Senate in Missouri. He was born uh, one of ten children in Durango, Mexico. So, whew, interesting. Right now, talking about interesting, let's go to Tom DeWeese, president of the American Policy Center, editor of the DeWeese Report. Hey, Tom, how are you? I'm doing great, Chuck. How are you? Pretty good. That's going to be an interesting thing there. I don't have to show me no papers or whatever. No stinking papers? Is that what they said in the movie, I think? That's right. I don't need no stinking <laughs> badges. There you go. <laughs> badges, yes. Yeah. Well, boy, does this grab my attention here. And, you know, uh, uh, Paul Stern, who I work with, he and I constantly talk about the food police are going to be coming. And here's your article. Is salted popcorn about to become a federal offense? And guess what? We ain't joking, right, Tom? Unfortunately, we're not. Uh, the, the Food and Drug Administration announced uh, a couple months ago that they uh, were looking into uh, regulating the amount of salt that Americans consume, and uh, they haven't announced the program. And, uh, they've kept it under wraps because they know this is going to cause a firestorm, but they are talking about it. They are moving forward with it, and uh, what they do when they when you know they do this kind of thing uh, there is a rating that products have and uh, it's called a GRAS rating or generally recognized as safe and as long as they have that rating then uh, you know you can go ahead and, and have it but if they you know what's that funny rating, Tom uh, I just I just noticed this you're talking about this generally recognized as safe GRAS and I was just thinking, that's like grass. That may be the the last thing we can eat until they start regulating that. Grass, yes. I'm sorry. Well, we got to be careful in, this, in case they spray <laughs> the grass with chemicals, then we wouldn't that be able to true, eat that yes. either. Uh -huh. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but they take that they they take that rating away, and then the government starts to regulate, and that's exactly what they're talking about doing with salt. Uh, and and the government would regulate how much salt you would be allowed to uh, consume. Did we not warn these people about Obama's health care plan? And isn't this somehow going to be tied in for the protection of the American people to make sure they're not using any of this uh, so-called free, free plan? <laughs> well, you know, this, this is the tie-in to it. Uh, mm -hmm. You hear about all kinds of uh, rules and regulations uh, on, on our health, on our food, uh, our intake, and so forth, government controlling all those kinds of things. And, you know, we had a big debate during the health care plan about rationing of health care. And, of course, Obama and crowd denied, denied, denied that there was anything like that. But what you look at here, uh, when the government takes over some sort of health care, then they start watching the bottom line. And when, you know, you, you have something that will affect that bottom line, according to them, then they have to make sure you don't do that. And, and you know, we, we had this situation. People always wondered where the government got the control to implement seatbelt laws. Mm -hmm. uh, weren't we allowed to make a choice about whether we wanted to be safe or not? Why did the government get control of this? Why did they do that? And, you know, the, the real reason is that, uh, you know, because of government uh, uh, controlling or providing uh, emergency assistance, emergency vehicles, all the things involved in an accident, that was costing the government money when you had an accident, when you were hurt in that accident, and so they had, rightly then, the right to dictate that you had to wear seat belts in uh -huh. order to keep down the price of, uh, of you know, taking care of accidents. Uh, the same philosophy is being, will, will be used here under health care. If the government determines that salt makes you unhealthy, then it has the perfect right to regulate how much salt you take. And in the end, that becomes the same rationing that we talked about in the first place, rationing you know, health care. Uh, yeah, and you, and you say in your article already they're saying uh, that uh, regulating the salt will prevent thousands of deaths from hypertension 
had heart disease. Uh, not waiting for any medical studies, apparently. But you know, you, you don't have to go far when you read uh, one of Tom's articles to really get to the bottom of the story. It only takes the third paragraph. In a complicated process, the FDA would analyze the salt in spaghetti sauces, breads, thousands of other products, wait for it, here it comes, that make up, here it is, the $600 billion food and beverage market. Little bit of control over them, huh? And General Motors and everything else. Over the whole marketplace, over what you eat, where you live, how, you know, what kind of job you can have, all that stuff is, is all targets of, of the federal government. But what's really interesting about this, you know, you say, okay, where's this coming from? Where do they get this idea? Well, for the last 30 years, there, there is an organization called the Center for Science and the Public Interest, the uh, uh, CSPI. Uh, these are the food police. These are the guys, whenever you hear about uh, rules, regulations, re uh, restrictions on anything you eat, these are the guys who have come up with it. For 30 years, they have been pushing for regulations on salt. There but is Tom, no science. Tom, isn't, isn't that organization, the, like the leader, whoever he is, isn't he worried that he's going to upset his spaghetti and, uh, you know, and all this wonderful stuff he's been eating? Isn't, isn't he worried about that? Michael Jacobson, who's the head of the uh, uh, mm -hmm. Center for Science in the Public Interest, mm -hmm. is a rabid vegetarian, oh. uh, and he is literally horrified by anything that man chooses to eat. They have literally uh, put out report after report, no extra cheese on your pizza, uh, no, uh, no buffalo wings, uh -huh. uh, no crispy orange beef, uh, beef and cheese nachos. Uh, cheeseburgers, uh, on and on and on. Anything fried, anything cheese, with, milk. with Yeah, you got a list here. Cheese, milk, ice cream. Uh, let me see here. Uh, they oppose any consumption of alcohol. Shame on them. Hefty increases in beer taxes. Even restrictions on adult. Well, they're going to have a, a beer police. They are gonna, they're going to have a problem, I'm telling you, because the NFL is mighty, mighty powerful. Uh, poster sized warning labels in restaurants, a lot of those already have that. All of that action, of course, uh, as Tom says, serves only to drive up the cost of food while robbing you, the suckers, you Americans, of a freedom to choose what you eat. Uh, man, it is out of control. And, and, and you look at it and you say, okay, what's left? And uh, literally, Michael Jacobson, not joking, suggested a sandwich of lettuce and bread. However, be careful of the bread because it has salt in it and the mm -hmm. lettuce might have been sprayed with chemicals. So there's nothing left. He, he really looks, uh, one, of the, one of the reports they used was of the uh, folks in the Netherlands uh, during World War II where there were severe shortages of food and, 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 and people were starving to death then, but they had a much lower rate of heart disease. So therefore, uh, having starvation diets is healthy for you. This is literally what these people advocate. <laughs> you know, it's, it's, 